Hi, I'm Jim. Welcome back to the hangar. Um, today I'm looking at the brakes on my Merlin GT. So it looks like they've been leaking. I, I think, um, you know, just based on what I'm seeing here, I think at some point somebody used um, automotive brake fluid in these Matco brakes. Uh, I've since cleaned it out and, and changed all the fluid, but uh, I suspect it's done its toll and, uh, and the O-rings have gone bad. The, the stock O-rings are Buna N, which doesn't hold up to brake fluid. I'm just going to pop it apart, put new O-rings in it, see what's going on, make sure everything looks good, and uh, away we go. Oh, and I should again mention, uh, I ain't no A&P, so you know, watch this at your own risk. Uh, yeah. So with that, let's get rolling. Looks like uh, to get this apart, my first thing I need to do is get the disc off, then I can pull the wheel, and then I can start in on the brake assembly. Okay, now I can pull the nut off the axle and get the wheel. Okay. And I can lift off the brake rotor. Yeah, it looks pretty cruddy there. It's what I did was I kind of got out of sync and was recording when I intended to be paused and paused when I intended to record. And of course, a clever person would have recorded taking the other side apart and they would have had some footage to work with, but no, not me. So anyhow, um, you didn't miss a lot. Cut the safety wire there. Uh, remove those two bolts that are safety wired. Those run through the brake pads and into the caliper. And then the other two bolts have nuts on the back. Remove those and take that bit apart. And I'll also say, if you've been hearing a lot of helicopters, um, I recorded this during one of the days that they have Island Fest there at the airport, so the local helicopter service was hopping rides all day long. Here you can see the piston is out. To get it out, I put my hand over the piston and caliper assembly and stuck my other hand inside the airplane and gently pushed on the brake pedal and popped it loose and lifted it out. Easy peasy. And now we will go back to your regularly scheduled program already in progress. So there's the O-ring in the in the disc or the caliper. There's the piston. It's kind of cruddy. Uh, we'll go after that with some Scotch Brite, clean it up, and I'm just going to let it drip. I don't care if I lose the fluid. The O-ring doesn't look terribly bad. We'll see what it looks like when I get it out. Cleaned up the piston off camera. Nothing exciting about that. Let's get the Mr. O ring out. Come on. You can do it. There we go. Doesn't look too bad, except where I poked it with the awl. But. I think the uh, replacement o-ring was 39 cents, so I don't feel bad about uh, replacing it. Okay, I take that back. I just looked at the invoice. The o-rings are 36 cents, not 39. So yeah, 39, I probably would have thought twice about replacing it, but 36 will do it. Okay, that's cleaned up. It goes this way. Lubricated the oil ring, oh, oil ring, o-ring. That should press in. Goody goody gumdrops. I'm going to. Yeah, okay, it has stopped dripping, so I have to bleed the brakes. But uh, before we get carried away, I got to put new linings on, so let's go over to the bench. Okay, according to the diabolical directions, you drill out the rivets with the number 25. 
taking care to not damage the hole. Let me go get a punch to pop those heads off. Okay, apparently I got both sizes, too big and too small. So we'll look at see what the back of the drill bit will do. Well, it does not want to pop. Okay, good enough. Now, to drive the rivets out, out. I've got the official aircraft tool supply tool recommended by Matt Kowitz. $30, $40 somewhere in there. I don't remember. And it should press the rivet out without too much excitement. And then to set the rivet, you use the other size mandrel. Yep, that is out. Rinse and repeat. Okay, so they give you four, yeah, four <laughs> brake linings. I, they're all identical, near as I can tell. And we can put as long and short rivets. Short ones are too short, so the long ones seem to be the obvious choice. One. At least set them in here. Two. Am I on? Yeah. Three. They're gonna, yeah. Well, I'm going to do this. Put two of them in backwards for the moment. So I can set, do the middle one here and have everything lined up okay. And that sets on the tool. It, fits in there like that. And I've changed mandrels. I just double checked. 4-6 is what the um, drawing calls for. So yeah, the long rivet is the correct one. Not that the short one would have worked. And it's a matter of squeezing it down. Probably easier if I had this uh, whole assembly in a vise. But hey, why would I do things the easy way? And there is one rivet riveted. Turn that one around. Set it on the anvil. Oops. There we go. Run down the mandrill. And tighten away. And I don't think I'll bore you with the rest of this process because I got to do the same exact thing four more times. Okay, so there we have it. This one didn't require as much squisherizing because it's it's you don't have these recesses here, but they are. Definitely not falling out at this point. Here are all the 4-6s, new linings. Start putting things back together. Okay, 
Okay, I've cleaned things up a bit. We can start putting them back together. Oops, that's not right. The spacer has to go in here. And the bolt goes through there. And then this bad boy goes here. And I put the bolt through in the wrong direction. I don't know that it matters, but the drawing shows it going the other way, so. Might as well do it according to the print, right? And I also realized I left my torque wrenches at home. So I'll have to come back for that. Not exactly the end of the world, right? These bolts get Nordlock washers. I didn't originally have them, but apparently they have updated things. And I bought the Nordlock washers. Again, they don't cost much. And again, Put spacer in, don't you? Probably doing this in the opposite order would have been better. Hmm. Okay. Now oh, this has to go. Okay. Spacers have to go into here first, then I can slip them down there, and then I can put the bolt through. A million monkeys and a million typewriters in a million years will eventually produce the works of Shakespeare, right? And if I keep randomly doing things, eventually I'll get this together. <sighs> okay, so that means the wheel is going to have to... So I want to do the other side. Okay, I'm going to have to come back to this. Okay, it appears that the magic way to do this is to assemble the upper bolts first. That's pretty easy. And then I should be able to slide in the spacers Ta -da. to dump. Bolts, put those in the right way this time. Don't know that it really makes a difference. It might. I don't know how much clearance there is here between those and the wheel. Whatever. We'll do it by the book.
Okay, I'll go get my torque wrench and the specs. Spec is 100 inch pounds on these power block washers. Can you click? Click. Okay. And I'll look up the numbers for the other bolts. Okay, these are 50 inch pounds. Yes, there's an airplane in the background. Click. That is not very tight, but that's what the book says. We're going to get a straight shot on this thing. get a straight shot on that. Okay, I'm thinking turning the head of the bolt since it's not much friction is less air than this angle, you know, using a universal introduces an air because you're no longer lined up with a bolt and it's a function of let's see cosine of the angle. Okay, so those are torqued. Let's Safety wire these, torque seal those, then we can, I think I'll just bleed them like this, and then we'll assemble the wheels. Okay, so I've got the plug out of the top of the master cylinder. In an ideal world, I'd have like a bamboo skewer or toothpick to check the level. I'll have to make do with an Allen wrench. Right now, it's the master is pretty much dry. I let it, I just let it drain most of the fluid, not all of it out. Just, just on general principles, and might as well refresh what I can. oil can, uh, the fluid, crack the bleeder, and pumpity pump pump pump. I also um, put a rag around the uh, master cylinder just in case I overcook it. Oops. Okay, so I'm this in the camera. <laughs> so the fluid's about there, so I still got a ways to go. Hopefully there won't be a geyser. to the top there. So I'm going to call that good. 
Okay, according to the manual, this is supposed to be two tenths of an inch minimum, which is um, several millimeters. So I've got two 25 plus 13, 38, 238 there. A little bit more there. Yeah, that's 25, 41, 241. Um, okay, I'm going to call that good. Okay, so I got the uh, got safety wire in the holes for the disc. While it's off, it's easier to do. I got the bearings repacked. We can put the wheel on. At this point, it isn't exactly rocket science. Where is the bearing? And the nut. The hole for the cotter key is at one, about 130. Now, because these bearings have seals built in, you can't t do the thing you're used to doing in the car, where you tighten it up and just back it off enough so it spins freely. It just doesn't have the same feel because of the you're squeezing against the rubber. You want it so. Oops. So you can see right now the seal is turning with the wheel. That's what you don't want. You need to tighten it up enough that the st seal stays stationary. Tweak it just a little bit more. Because if the seal is spinning with the wheel, then the bearing is spinning with the wheel. And it wears the axle. Okay. I'll go get a cotter key. And we'll do the brake discs. Okay. Sure, it's a nice view of my hand. Okay, with that, I think I'm going to call it a wrap. I still have to torque everything up on the other side, but there's really nothing, nothing new to film. So I hope you found that at least entertaining, and I'll catch you on the flip side.